Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dylan Ray again, and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. And today I'm pretty excited because we're gonna be trying to migrate my game Cubix to the Magic Leap. I'm gonna try to do this in about an hour to two hours. If we can do it in an hour, great. If not, we'll be dividing this into multiple videos. So what I wanna do today is actually work on the core functionality. I'm gonna go in and, and basically go into our existing project try to pull it over and then import it into the newest version of Unity. We're gonna be you know, using the Magic Leap SDK and some of the components that Magic Leap provides. And then if we have time, we'll work on the UIPs and also the input controls. So let's actually jump into Unity and start working on it. All right, guys. So what we're gonna be doing in this video is try to convert my game Cubix to the Magic Leap. And I'm gonna be honest, I haven't rehearsed this. I don't know exactly what, how we're gonna be doing it. But I want to make it this way so that, you know, when you start working on your game, you have an idea of what it's going to take. So we're going to be figuring this out uh, together. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I have the game, you know, I have my game in GitHub and I'm basically just cloning. I have it. It's called Cubic. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to open the Unity Hub and we're going to basically just create a create a component export a unity package from my game so i'm just going to click on open and we're going to find the cubics folder project and this should be the project that we're going to be converting and it's going to tell me which version i want to convert it to so i'm going to convert it to the latest version that i have actually i haven't tested 2018.2.089 i'm going to use the one that says prefer because that's the one that i've been testing with and we can just do the current build target. It's gonna hit open. And this might take a minute and that's fine. So what I wanna do is instead of keeping this project in the same repository, I'm gonna create a new repository. This is saying unsupported build target. Build target iOS support is not supported and we can just switch target, that's fine. We can have a switch to Mac OS and then, because that's basically what we're gonna be using while we convert it to the magic lib. Okay, so it's just compiling. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do, let's actually go back here and we're gonna be creating a new project. So that project is gonna be going into, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call it Cubix underscore AR, just like I did with Demolition AR. So I'm just gonna create a new new folder for that. Cubix underscore AR. And that's basically what's that where that's gonna go. Excellent, so we can just focus on that piece. Well, the conversion while well, the conversion happens so let's go ahead and let's see should be done in just a few seconds let me actually go into a big bucket and i told you that this was in github actually my private projects are in big bucket so that's what i'm going to be doing i'm going to be creating a new repository in big bucket so i'm going to go in and create a new repo and yes i want to put it in there and i'm just going to call this one cubixar this is gonna be private and I don't wanna include a readme for now. This is not gonna be public, so I don't need to worry about documentation. And then create repository. Excellent, so it's gonna tell me here, do you want to, you know, you wanna connect your existing repo? So I'm gonna just do this while the conversion happens. So there we go. So now we can do, let's see, we can go ahead and do a git in it to initialize the repo. We're gonna add an origin. And we're not gonna push anything because there's really nothing to push. What we can do is we could create a readme file so that we have at least something to, to check in. We can just do readme.md and we can say this is the this is the Cubix version. This is the magic magically version of Cubix. And let's see magic lib version of Cubix. We can delete this as well. Excellent. Okay, let's just save that and I'm just gonna add that file, commit it, initial files. And then the other thing that I can do, I can add a git ignore. So let's copy that from another project. So I'm just gonna go, let's see, let's go into Unity. I think I have one in VFX Essentials git ignore uh, i thought i have one in there maybe not in that project 
Let's go to another project. I'm sure I have one in Demolition CL. Let's do, okay, so I don't have one there either. So let's see, Unity, Audio Spectrum, and yeah, I have one right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and copy this one. So you just do copy, git ignore, and then we'll put it under the Cubix AR. There we go. Let's go back and make sure that I put it in the right location. And ls la. Okay, so we're good to go there. So I'm just gonna add that file as well to source control. And then we can just say add it, git ignore. And this is so that we don't check in things that we don't need, such as the files that get built automatically. Okay, so we added that and let's just push master. So we'll just do git push origin master. Awesome, so now if we refresh this, we should have a repository created. Okay, cool. So now let's focus on what we have going on in here. And yep, I have a lot of issues and all errors and I knew that was gonna happen because I haven't touched I haven't touched this project in a while. So how can we convert it? And that's, you know, that's basically gonna be the main question. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this working so that we don't have, so that we don't have errors. And we can see this is complaining about com that test mesh pro. And let's see, library package. Let me just double click on it. It's just complaining that this one is not supported on the for that zero specification. Let me go ahead and update text mesh pro just to make sure. And for some reason, I don't see the package manager either in this version. So it looks like there's a lot of issues with this. Let me see what happened during the conversion. And I do have the game. I don't believe I'm using that for anything. Oops. Let me just go ahead and see. This is just the library package cache. Let's actually go into. Let's go into that directory. And the other thing that we can do too, we can look at packages and see what packages I'm using for this game. And it looks like I'm using Test Mesh Pro and I didn't think I was using it to be honest. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into packages. Okay, so let's open up the command line or also call the terminal. And we're gonna go back into that directory. So let's go into Cubix and I'll just use VS code, so just to code that. Excellent, and let's see what's happening, what's happening in here. So I might be quiet for a minute as I'm trying to figure this out, but just, just watch what I'm doing and hopefully this is gonna be helpful for you. So let's see, Tash Mesh Pro, looks like I'm using it in here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I don't think I need it for the new project, so I'm just gonna delete this. And then the other thing that I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna open a new, tab here, let's go into that directory and blow up the cache. So I think there was, yep, let's just go ahead and remove that folder completely. Let's go back into Unity and see what happens after that. I think that's gonna fix it because I'm not using Text Mesh Pro that I know. Okay, so that error went away. Okay, so now if we hit play, we still have an error, an error and I think I know why. Okay, so what is this? System reflect, reflection multiplayer. So we have another error on the com that multiplayer. I'm not using the multiplayer either because this game doesn't have multiplayer component. So, so we're gonna do the exact same thing. I'm not sure why all of those errors all of a sudden are showing up. So let's let search for. Okay, here it is. It's gonna delete that and then go ahead and blow it up. Go back here and see what happens. See if we still have errors of some kind. Okay, so no errors. And see if our game plays. And I haven't tried this on a newer version of Unity, so that's why I'm having I'm having all these errors. Okay, so it's importing. And let's see, let's see what happens after that. So I want to get it to a point where at least the game is running. While the once the game is running. We're gonna be creating a package of everything that I have in here. I'm gonna clean it up a little bit so that we don't import, we don't export things that we, we're not gonna need like Google Play or or the iOS plugins that I I'm, I know that I'm not gonna use on the Magic Leap. All right, so this is still going. 
So I really want to basically run this on the ML1 and then be able to generate a level, be able to play a level. And, and if in this video we get the core functionality going where we can use, you know, the trigger button on the controller to generate a level, then I think I'm going to call that good. And then maybe in the next video we can do something else such as, you know, using a hand gesture to move the cube around or, or try to use some of the functionality that Magic Leap provides. All right, so it looks like that's still going. Look, so we're importing the the music now. The MP3 files, the WAV files. All right, all right. So it looks like we have post processing as well showing, and this says the open scene has been modified externally. We can just do reload. Okay, so we still have a few issues. Let's just clear it out and see if we can play this game. And let's see. Yeah, it looks like it's working. Awesome. So we can hit play. We have some weird things happening, like there's a little flash. Okay, and I can play the game, awesome. So that, that's good to go, I'm gonna call that successful. So so now what I wanna focus on is I want to remove everything that we can, we're not gonna need. So before I keep going, what I'm gonna do is on the, so right now, I mean, let's see, games, cubics, project library, and if I do get status, I'm gonna have a lot of changes in here. So I don't wanna apply those changes to my iOS version. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new branch. And this is going to be feature, and we can just call this one Magic Leap. Excellent. So now I'm on a different, completely different branch. I don't make changes to the master branch. All right, so let's see what we need for the Magic Leap game. So animation, definitely going to need those. Audio, I am going to need the audio. Let's see, this is a plugin that I created. We we're going to need that, fonts for sure. We're not going to need this Google Play plugin, so I'm just going to go ahead and delete it. We're, we might get errors as I'm deleting things, but that's fine. We'll, we'll fix them in a minute. Localization, I do want to localize the game, so we're going to leave that. Materials. Models, definitely going to need that. Play Service Resolver, this is part of the Google Play plugin that I have. Yep, so we're not going to need that. I'm just going to go ahead and delete it. And then plugins, let's see, Android and iOS, iOS, we don't need that either. So I'm just gonna delete it. Post-processing, we're not gonna need post-processing because I, I want to use the latest version of the post-processing effects. So we're gonna delete that as well. And it's gonna, you're gonna see that the vignetting goes away as I do that. Yep, and it, and it happened. Resources, let's see, yeah, these are all my different levels that get loaded dynamically, prefabs we're gonna need thumbnails we're gonna need let's see scenes the only one that we're really gonna need is let's see game we can actually leave those that's fine if we have them let's see lighting data reflection probe we are not gonna need any of that to be honest we can just delete that game folder and we're gonna need okay perfect a scripts definitely gonna need a scripts because that's basically all the game logic and then some of the UI pieces Awesome. So I think I think we're good to go. So so the next thing that I want to do is I want to fix all the errors that I have in here. And yeah, this is comp complaining about post processing. So I'm going to fix a few things in here. I know for sure that the camera has a post processing component associated. So because I deleted it, now it's going to say missing. So we're going to delete that component. And I think that should fix that. And let me see what's in the canvas. Canvas looks fine. The main manager looks fine. Audio manager looks fine. The game looks fine. So let's see if this fixes everything. So let's go ahead and double click it. Double click on each error and then we'll fix those. So, okay, I see. So I have, for the iOS version, what I was doing is I was disabling the ambient occlusion because for certain devices that were old, I didn't want to, I didn't want that to basically impact performance. So. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete this. We don't need that. We're definitely not gonna use ambient occlusion on the Magic Leap to start with. And then I think we can, yep, that works. I don't need to, to remove anything else there. 
Then let's see what else is complaining. Oh, it's complaining about the using statement. So let's fix that. Okay, now let's double click on this Google Play error. I'm in the Game Center. And to be honest, we're not going to need the Game Center to start with. But let's see, let's just fix these errors and see if we need. We're definitely not going to use this iOS component. And we're not going to use this Google Play. And let's see what else errors out here. I think we should be good. Let's see. Let's go ahead and go back here. And it might just take a minute to, there we go. So now if we hit play, we should still be okay with the game. And let's see, if I hit play, everything is working. The lighting is a little bit off, but that's fine. We'll, we'll fix that in, in augmented reality. Okay, so I think, I think I'm happy with what I'm seeing right now. I don't think there's gonna be, you know, there's gonna be many problems. So the next thing that I wanna do for this is because because we're gonna be putting this in Magic Leap, I really don't want everything to go into the root folder. So I'm gonna create a new a new folder. And we're gonna create this folder and we're gonna call this one Cubix Game. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move everything to that folder. Hopefully that doesn't break anything else. And let's just call it Cubix. I don't think, I think Game is, is explicit. You know, Cubix, we know that it's a game, so we don't need to append the word game at the end. Awesome. All right, so now let's make sure that we're still, we're still playing. If I hit play, things work. And everything is working still. We have an issue with the UI, but I'm not gonna worry about it because we're gonna change that anyways. Okay, so that's all working great. All right, so now how do we go about creating, basically exporting this so that we can use it in Magic Leap? And Honestly, I haven't done this before. I have an idea what I need to do. So let's see, hopefully that works. And if not, we'll work it out together. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into assets and I'm gonna create a package. So I'm gonna export the package and I wanna export everything. Oh, and let's actually delete that file. That file I believe is for Google. So let's go ahead and delete that. And let's go ahead and hit play. Make sure that everything still works. And resize this. Okay, everything is working fine. Excellent, so let's go ahead and go into assets, export package, and we're gonna create a package of the game because we're gonna be creating a new project for Magic Leap and then importing that project, importing this package into that project. All right, we're just gonna hit export. I'm gonna just put that in my, in my desktop and let's create a folder. So this is gonna be Cubix packages. Excellent, and we're just gonna call this one Cubix. Let's go ahead and save it there. And if we go into that folder, we should see that package. And it looks at that. Okay, there we go. It's still running in the background. So here's the package. And, and what that did is actually created a package of everything that is in that folder. It's 114 megabytes, which is great. So, so I think we're done as far as the exporting what we're gonna need in the Magic Leap game. So let's go ahead and close this up. Excellent, and let's close VS Code. Let's close everything that we have open. Okay, let's close. I think we're good there. I'm gonna leave this repo open. You can go into the other folder that we created for the augmented reality game, for the Magic Leap game. All right, let me, let me drink some water because I'm losing my voice here. All right, so I think we're good. We're good to go here. All right, so the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a new project, a Magic Leap project from scratch. We're gonna basically drop it into this folder. All right, so these are these are gonna be the tasks. Let me go ahead and go into, into notes. We'll create a new, we'll create a new, basically a new note in here of all the things that we need to do. And yes, I am, I am very note oriented. I try to create notes as, as much as I can. So the, the first thing that we're gonna know, do is so this is gonna be tasks to do for the Magic Leap migration. Cubix Magic Leap migration. So the first thing that we did is we created a Unity 3D package for all the files in the game. So step number two, it's going to be create 
a magic leap project. And then, so that's basically going to be, and then check it in. Then check it in into source control. And then lastly, what I'm going to do, we're going to import the Cubix Unity package into our new magic leap project. And then the last piece is going to be, let's try, and actually let's do incorporate the controller on the magic leap to hit the trigger button to generate or basically to go to the next level. So this is just for debugging purposes. I want to basically hit the trigger button. As soon as I hit it, it's going to take us to the next level. That way we can test and see how the game looks like. And then the last one, it's going to be let's test. Let's test how the game looks in the ML1 device. OK, so we have a lot to do. So some of these ones are not going to take that long, I think. And, and I'm a developer, so you know how developers estimate. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and, and open up the Unity Hub. And awesome, let's go ahead and, oops, looks like I closed that by mistake or I selected something by mistake. We just go ahead and, and just quit it. There we go, so I think it's opening another project. So what I'm gonna do next is we're gonna be creating, we're gonna be creating a new project. So it looks like I opened another scene, so let's go ahead and close it. Okay, let's open it, open it one more time, click on new. And remember that we used uh, 2018, that 1, We're going to use that version one more time. And let's see, I'm thinking if we want to use the lightweight rendering pipeline or we want to use, let's, let's go ahead and use just 3D. Let's keep it as simple as we can. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this one on the Cubix AR folder. And this one is just going to be called Cubix. And I think everything else looks good. And then let's just go ahead and click on Create Project. All right, so this is resolving packages. And let's see, let's wait until it's done with the creation of the project. So we're going to get the project set up with the Magic Leap Unity files. Once we have it set up, we have a main camera thing we're going to be working on migrating you know migrating the project the package that we already created and bringing it into this project so i'm going to drink some water one more time okay there we go so we got the project created and let's just do some some initial setup so the first thing that i'm going to need is i'm going to just call this one let's just call this one the game scene for now and we can just call it game. We don't need the word scene. I think it's explicit because it's, it's under scenes. Okay, excellent. So the next thing that we'll do is let's go ahead and go ahead and go to File, Build Settings. We're gonna select the Lumen as the default platform. I'm also gonna click on Add Open Scenes to make that one the default scene, and then click on Switch. Switch platform so that we we start on the Lumen version. Excellent. So let's go ahead and go into Window. Package Manager, and we're going to need to do something else in here. So let me go ahead and let's do this. Let's go go ahead and open a new tab. I'm going to go into one of my Magic Leap examples. So let's go ahead and LWRP. You can go into this one. It's fine. Packages. And I'm going to steal some code from the very, from the very bottom. So we're going to need this line. And this is actually documented in the Magic Leap creation area. So we basically need to put that because the beta version has an issue. All right, so now that we have that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here and do code that, open up code for our new project. I'm going to go into packages. And let's see, Cubix AR, packages, manifest. I'm going to go to the very bottom here and then paste that line. This is going to allow us to, to pull packages from Unity. All right, so I think we're good there. Let's go ahead and now open the package manager, which we already have open. And from here, what we're going to need is the XR legacy input helper. So let's go ahead and click on install. 
and it's going to install it and bring in some of the magic loop components okay so it looks like that's completed all right so that, now the next step let's go into window package manager and actually we already we already did that let's go ahead and go into file build settings and player settings and i'm gonna snap this into another window here we don't need the asset store so i'm just gonna close that okay so now i want to focus on this quite a bit so i'm just going to resize everything here so let's go ahead and populate a few a few settings on their player so i'm just going to say this is Delmar games this is my game cubic so i'm just going to call it cubic so this is going to be the name of your game the icon i don't need to set an icon i don't think i need to do that for now and splash screen we don't need to worry about for now other settings we do need to change the bundle identifier so i'm just going to change that it's going to say cubics version code can be one that's fine the name i want to do one zero 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 i think everything else here looks great and publishing settings we need to basically select our certificate which i have mine under dropbox and i have that one under dilmer games magic leap certs it's going to select that so, so that it allow us to push to the ml1 and then this setting is very important if you don't set this you're gonna have a lot of errors when we try to pull the magic leap unity package so i'm just gonna set that enable it and then instead of using multi-pass we're gonna use the single basically the single pass instance and again some of these settings are documented in the magic leap forums so okay so i think i just memorized it because i did it just so many times so i think everything else looks great looks good here we don't need to make any other changes we just look through it very quick okay so that looks good all right i think we're good we're good here so now the next thing let's go ahead and bring in the some of the dependencies that we're going to need that magic leap provides it's kind of it's kind of scary that i remember all this and i remember it because not because i have a good memory but because i've done this way too many times so i'm going to use i'm using version 0.20.0 .0 of the sdk so i also have the magic leap unity package with that version also the sdk with that version so make sure that you have that set okay so i already downloaded it so i'm just going to hit open double click on the package and this is going to have everything that magic leap provides as far as like how to communicate with the sdk from unity so i'm going to hit import and that should take just probably a few seconds here writing package items importing so it's going to import everything so once this is completed what i want to do is i want to set the scene with the structure that magic leap has in their own examples so they normally have a content game object and also a rendering game object so we're gonna we're gonna do the exact same thing because I like I really like that structure. It makes things a lot cleaner. So let's see, it should be done here in just a minute. All right, so it looks like it's importing and looks like it did complete it. Awesome, and I think, I think everything is working. If I hit play, make sure that you don't have any errors on the console. Okay, so it looks like everything was successful. One thing that I want you to check to make sure is go ahead and go back to build settings. Actually, it's not build settings, it's preferences. So Unity, preferences, external tools. Make sure that you have the latest version set on the SDK, Looming SDK, so I'm using version 20. So you need to point that to that version. All right, so I think we're good to go there. Then the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the examples and we can pull basically any example. I'm gonna go into the controller and I'm gonna grab these two game objects. So I'm just gonna copy those. Then go into our scene. I'm gonna delete the main camera and also the directional light. Awesome, so, and then just paste the one that magically provided let's see what we have in here so we have a controller 
And I don't know, let's see, I don't need this controller visualizer. And we don't need the, let's see, the transform. Let's go ahead and delete it. We, we'll bring in the controller later. So now let's go ahead and focus on, see what Magic Leap has in here. So this is gonna be the UI. Let me go ahead and click on the canvas so that we can see the canvas. So this is the controller status. We don't need the controller status there. And let's see, the main camera, here's the directional light in the main camera. Okay, so I think I think we're good. Let's see what these dots are. Oh, I think those dots are for the, yeah, those are for the camera. Let me see gizmos. Okay, that's what I wanted to see. I wanted to see the gizmos. Now I also wanted to see the, basically the grid that surrounds the canvas. I think the gizmo is too big, so let's make that camera a little smaller. And then for now, let's just go ahead and create a, a UI text so that I can see, we can just say, Cubics, Cubics game migration. Let's go into 2D here so we can see the text. And we can just move it up. And I'm not seeing the text for some reason. Oh, there we go. I think the text is way, way off. And let's go ahead and let's see. Let's go ahead and go back to 2D. And where is my canvas? I'm going to go ahead and change the, let's go ahead and go back to the camera. Okay, there we go. I think, oh, okay. The, the text is just way too big for what we need. There we go. So we need to actually make it a lot smaller. So let's do 10 by 10 on the text. Let's go ahead and click on the canvas. Oops. And I'm not seeing the canvas. Oh, there we go, it's just too small. Let's go ahead and resize this. And that's the reason why I wanted to copy some of the Magic Leap files because they already have everything set with the proper size. All right, and where is our text? So our text is right here. Let's move it up a little bit. And I'm gonna change the color of the text to be white. And okay, and then close it. Then the width, let's see. Yeah, the text is just, I think, oh, it's okay. It's way too big still. I'm gonna move it. Let's just move it down. There we go. Move it down and right about there. And let's see the font, I'm not seeing. I think the font is just way too big. Let's go ahead and look at one of the examples that they have. And then we'll just cheat and copy. Let's go ahead and copy. Let's see, look at the size here. Okay, so I'm gonna just copy this canvas, go into our version, and then we can just delete that canvas and then add their canvas. There we go, easy. Okay, so now that we have their canvas, we can just modify some of these labels. And this is gonna be, we don't need the instructions, the controller status, and we don't need that either. Okay, let me make sure that we have everything that we need here. Yep, and we do have, oh, and this is looking for the camera. Okay, so that's fine. Let's just leave that as it is. And then the main camera. Okay, so on the instructions, let's just change this to be Cubics Game Migration. Awesome. Okay, so I think we're good here. Let's go ahead and hit play. And let's see. And the camera. Okay, so I think we have some issues with the, go ahead and drag and drop the camera here. So let's go ahead and hit play and see what happens. There we go. So, I, so when I moved it and copy over, I, I basically lost reference of the camera. So you need to just associate the camera with the canvas. So now we can see, we can see our canvas. Okay, so this part, it's good to go. So now the next thing that we need to bring in is the package that we created for the game. So to do that, I'm going to go into folder. Let's go into the desktop, Unity, basically the Cubics packages. Double click on that package. And this is basically the entire game that we exported. And yes, we wanna put it in that folder. I'm gonna hit import. And we might get a lot of errors, so we'll fix it as they, you know, as we find them. 
All right. Let's so import in everything. So now importing the music. I'm really, really eager to see how this is going to look in the Magic Leap. Because I, I tried, I created a game called Cubix AR, and, and that looks cool, but I wasn't actually wearing a set of glasses to do that augmented reality. So with the ML1, I think it's going to be a lot more fun to, to actually visually see how Cubix looks like in augmented reality. All right, so looks like that worked. Let me just clear some of these errors. Let me hit play, make sure that we don't have any more errors. Okay, so we're good to go there. All right, so now, now here's where here's where I think we need to do. We need to go into my game scene, and this is where everything you know. I have the UI, I have all different pieces, and to be honest, I let's see if we can just make it work by just copying everything. I don't think it's gonna be that easy, but that's let's just give it a shot. Okay, so now let's go into the scene that we just created, go into content and paste everything and drop it into content. And okay, so looks like that's good. So now we have two different canvas and that's what's gonna be the problem. We have a canvas that is controlling the you know the old game and then a new canvas that is a lot different. So I don't know what's gonna happen if I just hit play. Let's see what happens. And yeah we have two different canvases. So let's see if we can make it, if it's as easy as just dragging and dropping everything in here and dropping them into the new canvas. So this canvas has also a few scripts that I want to make sure that we copy over. So we need to copy the animator. So I'm gonna basically paste them into the new canvas. I also need to copy the user interface manager. So let's go ahead and paste it into this new canvas. And the new, this new canvas is the one for augmented reality, so that's the reason why I need that. And I'm losing, I think I lost the game manager, or maybe that gets set, or I think that gets set dynamically. All right, so I think everything else looks good here, and perfect. So I'm gonna rename this one to canvas because I think in the game I'm actually looking for that name. So we can change that later, and okay, so that looks good. Then audio manager, it's fine. I don't know what this floor is for. Oh, that's the atmosphere that I wanted to give the game. So that's fine. We can just we can just leave that for now. Let me see where the camera. And I have multiple cameras, so that's gonna be that's gonna be a little bit of a problem. So let's see what we're doing on this camera. And what I'm saying, okay, state manager. If the current state is the menu, okay. So let's go ahead and. Let's go ahead and copy that script on the camera itself. And I also have a camera, an animator on that camera. And okay, let's go ahead and copy this. Put it into our new camera. And to be honest, I haven't tested this before, so we'll see what we get out of this. And let's see, go back to the other camera, copy the animator there, because we have some animations on the camera and we can paste it into here. I think we can now delete this camera. I don't have anything else specific to this. Yeah, I think we're good to go. So let's delete that. The light, I also have a light manager. Let's see what that light is doing. Yep, so I need to also copy that. And I'm also going to name this one light, just because I think I'm, I'm using that same name. So the less changes, the better. All right, and I'm gonna copy the animator for the light, and let's just paste that component. Let's go ahead and go into the light manager. So I have a script too, and then paste it in here. I think this is gonna work just out of the box, and, but if it doesn't, we'll, we'll figure it out. All right, so then also, let's name this one just camera. Okay, so we have a canvas, we also have the light, the camera, and then an atmosphere. And then I have my game manager, which I think all of that should be set to nothing. If not, we'll, we'll figure it out here in a minute. Okay, so I think we're good to go. Let's see what happens now. Okay, so 
I still oh, okay. I have one error. Let's see why I have one error. And let's see. So this is looking for environment. Okay, child level manager. Let me see where my level manager is at. So that's that piece. I have the camera manager. I think what's happening is because I changed the structure of this, it's complaining about it. So what I'm gonna do is let's see. I'm gonna assign game manager has not been assigned. Let's see. So this is looking for game, which is right here. And this is the level manager. Let me see where this one is getting this one is getting used. And if I go into the controller manager, okay. And I have my event manager here, the area manager, and I have my content. Okay, so here's a level manager, and let's go back to that again. Go ahead and hit play. Let's see, you can also look at the stack, stack trace and see where that is happening. So it looks like it happened right on a star. Okay, line 31 of the level manager. So we go to line 31. So if we go to the definition of that meta which is right here, then it's looking for the canvas. Okay, let me see, level manager. Oh, okay, I see. So I lost, I lost the connection to this one, get component, level manager. So it's trying to find, so when I wrote these, I, I didn't, I wasn't very familiar with Unity, so that's where you're seeing a lot of these references. To game object that fine i don't use those anymore as much so so that's fine for now we can we can fix it let's see let's go ahead and hit play and see what happens the variable environment the variable environment of game manager has not been assigned So this one is being assigned here. All right, so what I'm gonna do is, let's go ahead and add a breakpoint so we can see what's happening and see where it's actually happening. So I'm gonna debug it and Unity debugger, hit play. All right, so we can go ahead and let's see. The variable environment of game manager has not been assigned. Let's go ahead and look at the game manager. Here's the environment. So this is trying to find on the game manager, trying to find the game, the environment variable, which happens to be here. Oh, okay, I see what's happening. So I lost, let's go ahead and associate the environment with the environment there then the level manager with the level manager let's hit play and see if that error goes away okay so it looks like we're good to go and okay and there's a there's our example level it's tiny and where's our camera okay so there's our camera there I think we're gonna need to offset this because the yeah the level is way it's right beneath the, the camera and so if we go ahead and look at the game so I can actually so the game is right there the camera happens to be here and I already have let me see let me just offset it maybe a tiny bit forward let's do about 30 and we're gonna have to go in and change the, the sizing. Okay, now let's look at our camera. Okay, let's move the camera forward and see if we can see. Let's see if we can see, so it looks like, okay, there we go. 
I think the level the level is too big. Let's go ahead and okay, perfect. Let's go ahead and move it back a tiny bit more. So let's do 20. Keep play. Let's look at our camera. Okay, I think I think that's fine. Let me see. Let's go ahead and look at the game. And mute audio so you, you can hear me. Okay, perfect. Zero there. Okay, camera. Okay, so if I were to play this in augmented reality, we're gonna see that level. And I'm just gonna have to work forward a little bit, which is fine. And I think that's great. Let me see. Let's see what else is gonna be. Okay, perfect. So now the next thing that I that I'm not seeing is the UI is not rendering. So if I were to, you know, if I want to hit play or or I really don't see anything happening. So let's go ahead and hit play one more time. Okay, I only see the game. I don't see anything else, and that might be because of the sizing of everything. And if I look at the canvas. Yeah, the canvas is very, very small. Let's go ahead and click on this and I want to see the gizmo, so let me see. And where is my canvas? Yeah, I think everything is just way, way, way too big see if we can change some of the settings on the canvas so if i change this to say we can also change with some of the canvas scalar uh, i don't think that's doing anything so all the components on this thing are huge let's see if i hit the play button let's see if we can just get the play button to look right if I look at this, okay, so see the scale, how how dramatic of a change that is. So I think what we're gonna have to do is we if we go to play and then scale that one down and then size it, position it properly. So let's see if we can hit if we can see that. Okay, there we go. And I'm not seeing. Okay, let's hit play one more time. Let's scale everything. So zero, zero. Going to our canvas. Okay, yeah, we're gonna have to fix some of these, some of these buttons. And in fact, this one right here, it's gonna have to be properly, properly sized. So let's see if we do. I just want to make it so that at least we can see we can see the UI, so let me just move some of these. Okay, so that one, I think it's fine. Let's do 40 and 30 on play, and then we're not gonna have a raid button, so I'm just gonna delete that one. Settings, let's copy what we did on the play. So 40 and 30, okay. So settings is gonna be 40 and 30. We just move it here and then change the scale. Okay. So that one, it's supposed to be 40. Okay, excellent. And we'll 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 align it properly. The this guy as well is gonna have to be scale 40, 30, 0, 0. Then the settings window, that's probably not gonna work as it is. So so what I'm wondering, I think the UI needs to be basically all rework. And what I wanna do on this is I just wanna play, hit play, and then see the level. So what I'm gonna do is instead of actually going through all this, I'm just gonna have a play button. So I'm gonna delete that guy. We're gonna delete this guy. Settings icon, we're just gonna have play. And then basically just the title of the game showing. And we can delete the warning back. We don't need that. We don't need that as well. We don't need social media, music. We don't need that either. The title, the title I want to bring in because it's actually going to be cool to be able to see it. 
Excellent. And then it's going to 0, 0 here. Let's just do 40, 30, and then we'll resize it. Excellent. And we can just now resize this properly. At least so that it gives us an idea of what we're doing. All right. So I'm just going to basically move these up here. And I think that I think that part works. Let's snap it to the top. And 258. Let's just do 55. And do 50. I think that works good. Settings is going to go away too. Level selector. Uh, let's see how that looks in a minute. The level. This is the level that we're playing. I want to see that on the UI. So let's go ahead and resize this as well. Zero, zero. Awesome. So let's go ahead and make it bigger. Let's do like 50, about 90 and 50. And then let's just change. This is going to show us the, the, num the level number that we're on. Okay, we can just do we can just do something like that. We can just put it right there. I think that works. And I just do zero. Okay, so I think I think that looks good. Share, we don't need to share the game. Reload, we're gonna map that to the controller. And then menu. We're also gonna be mapping that to the controller. Okay, so here we can just say cubics magic leap prototype just so that people know that this is a prototype that we're building we can make this bigger okay I think that looks good snap it to the bottom okay so now level play all right so I think that looks good let's make this bigger let's do 80 and 60 Okay, I think that looks good. And the title dot is gonna change. Let's see, because this is all animated. So let's see. I don't wanna I don't wanna animate it because we we might just place it in there. It's gonna do let's just place it right where it should be going. There we go. That's huge. And we can just put it in position. This is this one is animated rotate it so we'll just we want to animate it right now I think we want to get the basic core functionality of the game going before we start making making it look cool okay so I think I think that works okay so the other thing that I'm gonna do is let's re let's remove the animator so I don't want to animate anything and I think that one works and I also had another one on the level itself. Uh, let's see, on the light, okay. Yeah, let's remove that one as well. Okay, so we have a camera. See, we also have one on the camera. I'm gonna remove that one. Okay, so I think, I think that works very good. And okay, we might get a lot of errors, so let's see, let's see what happens now. And this, basically the ground is huge. So let's go ahead and do one, one, one. And where's our camera? Okay, so our camera is there. So we can do, let's do 10, how about five, five, five. Okay, so that's gonna give us a little bit of a, it might look okay, it might not look okay. We'll see, we'll see how, how that looks. If, if it doesn't look okay, we'll just go ahead and remove it. Okay, so that, it's good. Level selector, I don't think I want to do anything with the level selector, because that's gonna complicate things. I'm just gonna remove the level selector. And then this title dot should be what we have on the UI. Okay, so we have, we have that on the UI. Let's remove the level number. Okay, so we're just gonna have Something very, very simple. And this one is just gonna be called, I just call it dot. And right above the title. All right, so I think we're we're as good as we can be as far as like what functionality we're gonna be providing. So we're even, we're actually not gonna even hit play. I just wanna have it there just for, just for demonstration purposes. We're gonna hit the trigger to play the game. 
Okay, so now I can just close out of this. Okay, let's see what we get if we, oh, that's cool. So now if I hit play, and yes, I knew we were gonna get a lot of errors, so let's see if we can fix some of those. So this is looking for a lot of the UI components. So let's see, what do we do here? Because we have a lot of things. Uh, we don't need any of this, to be honest. So I'm just gonna remove all that. The legacy settings, uh, having all the, okay, we don't need that. Handle aspect ratio, we don't need that. The animator, I removed the animator. We do need the game manager, the audio manager, and also the level manager. I don't need to handle aspect ratio because I know what it is. Okay, I think all of that looks good. On star, this is where it's gonna try to bind and add the listeners for the buttons. We're not gonna do any of that. And that's basically all we're gonna do is just set the music. Uh, localized text, we don't need to set any localized text because I basically just remove most of the most of the UI. So we're just gonna re we're just gonna delete all that. We're not gonna change the language. We're not going to share the game menu. I don't need to worry about that. So basically, this user interface manager is going to do almost nothing. This is going to be modify, so play on click. So I'm going to bind that to the control. OK, so this is audio manager, play button sound, level selector. We can just remove that piece. We're not going to do any animations. We're not gonna stop the animations. Okay, so star level. Okay, so we're gonna have to fix some of these. We don't need to reload the game. But I want to leave it because I'm gonna map that to the controller. We're not gonna allow rating the game. There's not gonna be leaderboard for now. There's not gonna be settings, no back. Mm, actually, let me think about this one because we may want to go back and let's see back on click. Okay, so this is really not doing much, so I just delete it. Music on click. Oh, this is so that if we can tag all the music, also the SFX can get rid of that. We can tag all the audio, we don't need that. Vibration, there not won't be vibration. Clear, this is if we want to clear the game data, so we're not gonna do that. So there's a lot of deleting right now. Uh, okay, so there we go. So basically what I wanna do is just be able to play the game to start, and then we can add more functionality later. This is all TVOS. I don't need to do any of that. Uh, menu, gameplay, application. So there's really not gonna be a lot of code in this game for now. This is if I want to go back, and if I'm in the settings, so this is a most, of, most of this is UI. And I think all of that is good. Gameplay in tvOS, we don't need to do any of that. So what I'm gonna do is basically delete everything in the update method. Okay, so I think that's good. Reload, we might need that to reload the game. And get component light manager, light on, we'll need that. Okay, so this is good. Play on click. Just delete this compiler flag. And there won't be any level transition. You can delete that. Okay. And we don't need to set the level that we're on. Okay, so this is very, very, very bare bones for now. And now what I can do, I can delete some of these, some of these UI elements. Okay. And audio manager, yep, we need the audio manager. We don't, we're not gonna be animating anything, so I'm just gonna remove the animator. Level selector, there won't be a level selector. Won't be a menu button. Okay, I think we're, we're as bare bones as we can be. Okay, I think all of that looks good. Oh, and I remove that method so we can remove that. There's no animator. Let me make sure animator. 
and I remove that one as well. Execute level creator. Okay, so this is instead of doing a nift, we're just gonna do we're just gonna basically generate the level. Okay, and then this one it's gonna populate the level. Alright, so I think let me just search for animator here. Okay, I think we're good to go there. Let's go back into the game and clear the errors. That might fix all the errors or give us more errors. Yep, we have more errors. And this is looking for, oh, this is looking for just the level text box, which I just removed. And let's go into here. So now this is the canvas. Okay, so we're not gonna do that for now. And let's see what else we have in here. Next level menu on click. And if the player reaches the end level, send back to the main menu. Oh, this is sort of if we, yeah, I see if we, if we reach the last level, we'll just remove it. We'll fix that later. And let's see, set level animation. We don't need to do that. We don't need to do that. Okay. Level selector. Surprising that I remember all this. And we remove the level selector, so we'll remove that as well. I think we're down to one error and we will oh I see we're not we're basically not populating the level selector because we're just gonna we're just gonna hit play and then use the trigger to go to the next level okay so that's good I think we're I think we're good with errors maybe one more oh that one is gone too now let's hit play and see what happens okay so this is complaining about the animator on the light So if we go here to game, let's see. So this one is complaining on level manager. Missing component, there's no animator attached to the light. Okay, so let's search for animator and see what we get. And yeah, we're gonna get a lot of things because I was using that quite a bit. And let's see if we can find light tracking example. How do you capture? And okay, here we go. Level manager. Yep. So it's looking for, okay, there we go. So I'm going to delete that line as well. I think that's where it's airing out. Let's see, play. Let's see if we get an error. There we go. So we're clean. Awesome. And see if we can see. The level getting generated. So if I go to environment, there's a level. That's cool. Where is our camera? So here's a camera. It's really hard to see because it's just too big. And I'm wondering. So if I get close, just curious why I can't see. Oh, there we go. The level might be huge, and and I think it's it's very big. That's. I think let's see let's let me create a cube here because I did that with the example of hello cube and what magic leap had me do was let's see if I can there we go so that one is one 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 and they had me do one point point twenty five point twenty five I'm gonna use that as a reference okay so that's kind of the size that I'm looking for and if you look at the level, it's huge. And but that's fine. I, I think for now, to be able to just see the level, even if it's big, so and I hit the trigger button, it regenerates. I think that's enough for us to to get it going. So what I'm gonna do now, instead of you know keep going, I want to see how this looks in augmented reality. So let's go ahead and jump into the ML one. I'm gonna build this, and and in the ML one, we'll look and see how the level looks like. So let me go ahead and do that, and then we'll continue on. All right, guys, so it looks like this is not working. The only thing that I see is the canvas. So I've been kind of like searching around to see where the, where the level is at, and I don't think it's showing at all. So I think we need to go ahead and modify the scaling a little bit more. So let's go back into Unity and look at it. 
All right, guys, so it looks like the scaling is just way, way too big. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit play, and let's see what we can change to make that better. Because I couldn't even see the, the structure in the Magic Leap device. So what I'm going to do is we can see that I have this environment game object. I'm going to resize the 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.25. And then the other thing that I'm going to do, I'm just going to place it basically so where we can see it through the camera. So I'm just going to move it up a tiny bit right in front of the camera. Let's see where the camera is right now. So this is going to be me standing up. So I might need to move it. And we can programmatically set this offset later. For now, I'm just going to do this. OK, so we can do two, two, negative 2.6. And then here we can do 1. We can probably just do 13. OK, so these are going to be our numbers. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy component. And then we can paste that those values. And I think that's going to change the scaling. If it doesn't change the scaling, we're going to have to find a different way. And it looks like that is changing the scaling. But I am, um, yeah, I don't think it's changing the scaling because this is happening, yeah, this is happening after the fact. So let me see what we can do to make that possible. Let's go ahead and change this back to what it was. So we, we can actually leave it there, but I'll just do one, one and one. Let me look at the uh, some of the components that I have in here. We might need to change the change the components in themselves, such as the prefabs that I created for this. So if I go ahead and look at the if I look at the solid tile and portal tile. So some of these ones are the ones that I'm using in the game. So that's a solid tile. And let me see, default tile is going to be that one. Those ones are very big, as you can see. So, yeah. And all of them have a scale of 93. Let's see if we can do something as simple as just rescaling that after the fact. Or we can just rescale them in here. So what I'm going to do is, let's go ahead and change this to do 1, 1, 1. They're going to be just way too too small. Let's go ahead and undo that. About 10, 10, and 10. Still way too small. can do 20, 20, 20. OK, so I'm just going to undo what I just did. Let's make sure that, let me look at these tiles, because the tiles themselves have, there we go. So that's the default tile. Oh, okay, I, I see. It's actually 93, 93, and 20. So I'm thinking that it might be just better just to scale this right after we load the level. So if I go back to the game and hit play, and we can probably just scale it right after we have everything loaded. I don't know that's how that's going to affect the gameplay, but we can, we can tweak it. Okay, so let's see. So I'm going to need this one to be 0 0.25, 0 0.25, and then 0.25. OK, so if I do that and then the camera, it's right there. So that means that we still need to offset this one forward. So let's see. OK, so negative 13 there. And then, OK, so I'm just going to. Let's go ahead and open up notes here. We can leave these two set to what it shows. And then we know that the scaling that we need to apply is 0.25. So we can do, let's go ahead and hit play and see what happens. So I think those two are fine now. Yeah, I think those are fine. Let's see 0.25, 0.25, and then 0.25. OK, so that's all we need to do is just basically scale the environment right after the game, the level is loaded. So let's go ahead and go back into the source code and go back into the level manager. OK, so this is the one that is generating the tiles. So what I'm going to do is at the end, let me go ahead and check one thing here, environment. So let's see. 
execute level, so we're executing the level creator. We call the generate tiles. I think this is just gonna have to happen at the very end, just like I was saying. So, so right here, what I'm gonna do is, let's just change, looks like I don't have IntelliSense, so let's go ahead and click on Assets, Open C Sharp Project. That's gonna bring IntelliSense back. Okay, excellent, and then maybe, It takes a minute sometimes to, there we go. Environment, and then we can do transform. And then the local scale, we'll just do a new, and then vector three. And this one is gonna be 0.25 F for flow. And then we'll just go the same all the way, all the way across. Let's just try this and see what happens. If it doesn't work, then we'll have to find a different solution. All right, so now if we hit play, well, what should happen is the level gets generated to that size in the beginning, and then when it's done, it's just gonna resize it, which is gonna look really weird. Let's see if we can do, let's see what happens if we do this in the beginning. We might not even show the level as it's getting generated, just for the demonstration. And let's go ahead and do, let's go ahead and do it here. And I think this is gonna be the same issue where it needs to be applied right after. Yep, that's gonna be an issue because at that time it hasn't been, they haven't been set. So what I'm gonna do is let's go, let's go ahead and, and do it right at the end. That's fine. Then we'll we'll have to we'll have to look into scaling the tiles themselves. Okay, so that's all happening, and then we, we scale. So let's try this on the Magic Leap one, see what happens. If that works, then we'll look for better ways to scale them. So what I'll have to end up doing is basically resizing the prefabs, which therefore will have the proper size. All right, guys, so let's see if we can see the GameCube X now display. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it up. And we can see May with Unity, the logo's coming up. And we can see the the basically the UI displays, and I also can see the the game now. It's actually too big still, and I'm gonna have to make some changes because it's basically position way offset. I need to be able to place the structures where I want to have them, but I think this is a great start. So let's go ahead and wrap it up right here. I'm going to basically create another video where we'll continue on. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions, let me know through the comments. Also, make sure that you check out my sponsor, who is GameDev.net. They have amazing resources for game developers, also an amazing community and amazing forums where people like you are looking for help and they have expertise that can help you in solving some of those questions. I also started a Patreon page recently to help me out with, you know, a video editor. I'm also using that funding to basically improve this community and improve my videos. So thank you very much, guys.